Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me. We're on the Grantham Canal. Um, we're just going out for a nice ride. It's a sunny day. I've had a few days of editing videos. Getting quite tired of it, so I really need to get out on the bike. So I thought I'd take you along with me for the ride and have a little chat. One of the things I wanted to talk about is the content I make. As you know, I don't have an agenda. I don't have any sponsors. I don't have to do anything anybody tells me to do. Just do what I like to do. I'm just ordinary. I like to ride longish distances. Not particularly fond of speed. Just love to get out on the bike. And I know that appeals to a lot of you. Morning. Hiya. I don't know. I often ride along the Grantham Canal and I've enjoyed watching the development of the swans along here. In fact, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you will have seen the swans and their cygnets. Well, sadly, most of the cygnets have died and it's thought to be possibly bird flu. The last I read, they hadn't done any autopsies on the birds, but the fact that a similar thing has happened on the Belton estate with some of their swans would suggest it is the bird flu. After my recent video interview with musician Jim Condy, a subscriber commented that this was different to my usual content, and in actual fact, he enjoyed it the most. My reply was that I try to be unpredictable. The truth is I don't try to be unpredictable. The reason I am unpredictable is that I don't really know what's coming next. Ideas just present themselves. People comment that I should meet certain people and others come back and say certain people want to meet up with me. And it seems to work. Don't you just love the colours of autumn? Right. Hey. Morning. You may have noticed that I've changed my head unit. I'm now using the Wahoo Rome version one. I had quite a few problems with the Garmin of late. And in particular, a ride that we did through Nottingham to the Benelli Viaduct was really, really bad. The Garmin kept getting confused. I think I'd probably put too many waypoints in, in fairness. But all it would tell us to do is go back. It didn't say go back to where, and it was quite confusing on the screen to see where the route was. Now, 
The reason I made a point of saying version one of the Rome is because it was pretty obvious that version two was coming out soon, mainly because they dropped the price dramatically of the version one. And of course, at the time you'll be watching this, you'll know that was indeed true. A version two has come out. So why have I gone for the version one? Well, the main reason is that I don't need all the bells and whistles that version two has. In fact, I don't need all the bells and whistles that the Rome has. All I really want is good solid navigation. Chain Reaction had dropped the price to, I think it was 190. And I had a discount code from British Cycling for Chain Reaction, so I used that. So I ended up paying, I think it was uh, 180. I do like a colour screen on the head unit. So I thought the version 2 with the extra colours it promised would certainly be an advantage. And in actual fact, I think that was totally wrong thinking. What I realised is that with the Garmin, the number of colours on that screen did tend to confuse me. Whereas the simple colours on the Rome version 1 make it so clear to see. I really like the breadcrumb trail that shows you the direction to go and the fact that you can easily zoom in and out using the buttons. But also I like the fact that instead of it just telling you to turn around, it will actually tell you which way to go and give you a blue breadcrumb trail to get you back on track. Now, it's not perfect because a couple of times I could see it was telling me to take a certain route that just by hopping over a verge I could avoid going back on myself but it's like every sat nav unit you need to use your brain as well right. One of the big benefits I've found is using this system with the Varia radar. I did have a problem hearing the warning tone on the Garmin. Sometimes I would hear the car behind me before I heard the tone. But there's no such problem with the Roam. The tone is nice and loud and you get five red LEDs sparking up at the top of the unit. Just like the Garmin, we've got the cars depicted on the right-hand side on a green strip. That turns red if the cars are approaching fast. And then it goes back to green once the cars have passed. I did consider other makes of head unit, in particular the Hammerhead Karoo which was recommended to me, but frankly, I couldn't justify to myself spending over 300 pounds for lots of functions that I'll never use. So I'm pretty sure I've made the right choice. I had a problem buying the unit, although Chain Reaction were great and they shipped it straight away on a two day delivery, they used every formerly known as Hermes and every, it appears, mislaid it. Chain reaction were very good. They sent a replacement and said that if the original one turns up, I should just refuse it and it would go back to them. So that was great service from them. Every had until the Sunday before they became liable for a claim from chain reaction. And interestingly, the original parcel turned up on Sunday. So where had that been for a week? Now, of course, until the parcel arrives with me, it's Chain Reaction's problem. What really, really annoyed me, and we're going to have a rant about, is that every said that they had delivered it, but I was out. And that was nonsense, because I was in all day. And then, 
their follow-up message was that their courier had trouble finding our address but they've never had trouble in the past and it begs the question if they couldn't find my address how would they know I was out I'll be testing the tubeless tires along here I think because there's been some hedge cutting going on and where most of the farmers do tend to sweep it up around here this one hasn't so we'll see Redshift very kindly sent me their kitchen sink handlebar kit. This comprises a unique design of gravel bar, a matching bag for your snacks, etc. But importantly, some special top and bottom grips. Now I'm not going to say too much more about these at the moment. Reason being that I want to try them over a few hundred miles and I certainly want to do a century ride within the next few weeks just to see how they stand up before I can really give you an honest answer. So if you want to see that review then please subscribe, hit the bell and you'll be informed when it comes up. The benefits of the kitchen sink bars are said to be that the grips give you a wider variation of places to put your hands and certainly these top grips mean that you can easily just put your palms on there and wiggle your fingers about and get some sensation back. Now, of course, if your fingers are getting numb early on in a ride, you really need to be looking at your saddle position and so on. But if like me, your fingers start to get numb around the 60 miles mark, these certainly should help. So we'll see. The other thing that's different is that they go against the received wisdom of having your bars at the same width as your shoulders. I do get a bit of aching in my shoulders, uh, so I've actually gone, would you believe, for a 50 centimetre wide bar. And so far it feels good. So I'll let you know some more in due course. Well, thanks for joining me today. I know it's been a bit one-sided, just me talking, but it's good to have you along. I don't often rant. I tend to be fairly relaxed in the sense that people screw up, get things wrong. Then I just accept it and try and work around it. I'm like that on the road as well. I tend not to get too angry with people. But every now and again you need a rant, so if you want a rant as well, please do so in the comments. Here's your chance. I hope to see you again soon. So until then, I wish you safe riding and say goodbye.